hold on, Dion to the Cowboys? Let's just tweet that out right now. It'll definitely happen, right? <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Bear Bits Podcast. Week zero preview of college football and maybe a little week one and a little whatever else comes up uh, in the gambling group chat. I'm your host, the Bear, Chris Felica, Jeff Schwartz, my co-host, uh, as always, joins me. Will and Sammy will be back uh, in a few minutes, but we've survived it, Jeff. We actually have the actual yes. games that actually count this weekend. Maybe they aren't the biggest names or the biggest teams or the, the tightest spreads, but there is actually real live college football this week. There is. I, I'm glad you're back home, Bear, because yesterday in our little pre-production call, you had driven from your home across the border to a different state to make wagers. That is dedication to Absolutely. the life of a sports Absolutely. wagerer. Hey, hey, any anytime you, uh, you, you need to... To, to go from from my house in Connecticut up to to Longmeadow Mass and it's, it's a nice little area that they have because it's it's there's a picnic table there it, it's kind of like drive you make the left into like this like semicircle like half moon and it's like a wooded area little little creek there that, that, that's over there but it, under a tree nice and nice and shady so it's it's almost like it was purposely put there to, to have people drive from Connecticut to to, to Massachusetts to be able to to, to make wagers on uh on some NFL bets that we'll talk about in our in our NFL podcast uh later on. However, I did make one I did make one college bet when I was there. Yeah. Just because you can't bet like head to head uh season win total bet, bet wagers uh in Connecticut. And I was just thumbing through I'm like looking for something to bet. And I just had to bet it on prerogative. And again, you're not gonna like it, but there was an Iowa Kentucky season win total head to head that was up there and Iowa was a minus 320 favorite. I'm like wow. Iowa to win more games than anyone should not be minus 320. So I bet Kentucky head to head versus Iowa. I but the number that's fine. I'm high on Iowa, but I understand the number there. So what do you get for Kentucky though? Plus 260? Yeah. It should be also plus 320, right? They should be even if, if they're going to charge us juice on these props at minus 115, minus 120 each way, they should give you a little bit of of love on the back end, right? Of the plus yeah, money. Good, as luck, well. good luck with that. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, Bear, I will say, I, I am excited for this weekend. A couple games, but next weekend, Labor Day weekend, Bear, I got to tell you something. My wife was at the beach with my son, who became a fisher. Obviously, he loves to fish. I, I don't know right. how that happened. He didn't learn it from me. Kid <laughs> loves to fish. He said to me the other day, good. on Saturday, hey, Hey, I, I'm at the beach now. Your son wants to fish another time. I want to take Emmy, our daughter. Is it okay if I take them for Labor Day weekend? <laughs> I could not say yes fast <laughs> enough. She said, I was hoping you'd say that. We're going to go to, to Myrtle Beach on Labor Day weekend. And I said, great. So, Bear, it will be Have me, fun. the dog, the televisions and my barbecue, my grill, my smoker, whatever I want to use from basically probably Friday morning until Monday night or Tuesday morning. It is the it is a gift my wife doesn't know she she gave me. She has no idea why I said yes so fast. Just not the slightest clue that, that football's <laughs> back. Has no idea that is why. And um I already I look, I was playing it out now. The only problem is this is one problem, Bear. I've learned over the years to be more judicious with my wagering on game day, like like four, four individual weekends for NFL and college football, right? Like the, the less you do, the typically better you can you can do, right? right? The the more way, volume you have, the you tend to lose a little bit more. It's the way it works. So now that I'm home for that entire weekend bear by myself, the live wager is gonna be a problem. It's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna have to contain myself to not live wager every game I watch that weekend. Yeah, that, that, that could be a yeah, restraint could be a problem, but you talk about a great way to, to, to kick off the season, basically three, three consecutive days of just basically t-shirt, gym shorts, go, go play fetch with the dog, rough, rough house a little bit, eat whatever the hell you want, wake up whenever the hell you want, go to bed whenever the hell you like. That's a, uh, it's a pretty good arrangement you fell into the man, my man. 
I I am excited. I'm hoping that she uh, offers this opportunity every weekend. <laughs> you may go to the beach every weekend, <laughs> but the kids. No, it's the fi- officially the final weekend of spring. I know, Maybe, or, or summer rather. I think I, I think you might want to. You maybe take the kids again to the beach for the final weekend of summer before we head into well, fall. This weekend, I mean, no. I, I, I got to be in my chair to watch Florida State, Georgia Tech. I have to be up at 12 midnight watching uh, Hawaii, Delaware State. Uh, there is – it is officially season time now, Bear. No, I, I uh, will not be staying up to watch the Hawaii game. But uh, week three of NFL preseason, you know, some action I'll have every now – you know, spread around. And, and then obviously – the games for week zero. Not the best slate, Bear, but it's going to feel good just to put the television on at noon Eastern on Saturday and have a, a football game that matters, right? The preseason yeah, yeah. has been up and down for who cares. We'll talk about that in, in, in our NFL podcast. But just to have a game that matters, right, between um, a ranked opponent here in Florida State, uh, SMU, Nevada. SMU probably score a ton of points. Their, their number's like 41 and a half for their point total uh, in this game. So it could see an upset with, with Montana State. Um, at, at New Mexico, uh, so it, it's a it's a small slate, but it'll be fun. Yeah, it, it'll be fun, and then obviously the following week, uh, numbers have been out there forever. Like like where where do you, where where are you on the on the spectrum? Do you like trying to maybe get ahead of a line, or or maybe or maybe just do you think all the moves have pretty much happened right now? I mean, you, you never know. I guess we could get some injury news come out of uh, camp next week or so, but. You, you think these numbers are pretty much locked in uh, where they're going to be, or, or is it worth maybe waiting uh, maybe for a better number? I mean, I guess it all depends on where you think it's going to go, right? I mean, you know, I, I will mention it later in the game. I took a Colorado number pretty early because I figured it would go in direction. I got, I was right there. Other times, like I have LSU minus six. I'm fearful that, you know, money comes in on USC and and I get a, a bad number on that bear. Right? That's my sort of fear in that game uh, that I took a bad number um, but I just wanted to, I wanted to lock that in. Uh, it feels like it is going to go in that direction. I thought it would go the other way, where LSU would be up to about seven point favorite, but it feels unlikely. So I just try to pick and choose when I think I'll get a better number. Sometimes I wait, sometimes I don't. Uh, this is the benefit of having multiple outs, but also just you got to pay attention, right? You have to see what the trends are going to be. Um, and you know, I, I don't do a ton of it. Uh, I do far less than I know a bunch of sharps do. Um, but uh, I, I dabble a little bit in some early season lines. Yeah, I, I think it right now really is about uh, waiting or trying to forecast what way it's going to go. And, and you alluded to it. I, I I did the same thing with the with the total in the in the USC LSU game. I, it hit sixty four. I'm like maybe it will go higher, but you know what? I'd rather bet it at sixty four than have maybe it come back down to sixty three and a half. So uh, if I happen to maybe not be on the best side of it and it goes to sixty four and a half for sixty five, yeah. so be it. But but I'm happy where I am. Uh, at 64, uh, I am even happier when Sammy P and Will Hill join us for the Gambling Group Chat. Gambling Group Chat is back, and we actually have college football this week. Real real actual games that may not necessarily look inspiring right now on, on paper, but uh, we are going to watch them and tread lightly if you wager on them. But, but guys, uh, I, I guess the biggest game of the week is over in Dublin, Florida State, uh, we, we, I think we saw this number at like 13 or so. Now it's down to 10 and a half in some spots. It seems like uh, everybody is on the Yellow Jackets to uh, to either keep it close against the Knolls or maybe even pull an upset over, over Florida State, who has been picked to win the ACC this year. Uh, Will, are, are we are we worried about the, uh, the Yellow Jackets here? We like the Seminoles. Where are we headed? Yeah, I mean, if you do like Georgia Tech, it is hard to take 11 when, you know, you had all summer to take 14. Uh, but, look, we got to play the ball where it lies. I, I'm i not going to bet the side of the total. I, I would lean towards an over. I think the best way to play is Florida State team total over as these are starting to pop up. I, I could see like a, uh, you know, a 34-24 type of game. I think 31 and a half is the consensus one that, I, that I've seen here. I just think. Florida State's going to have an advantage in the trenches. I think you give Norvell, who's a good offensive coach, time to prepare uh, against the Georgia Tech defense that I think is vulnerable, a little light in the trenches. Uh, I think Georgia Tech will be able to run the ball. That sets up DJU to do some stuff on play action. So uh, not going to be a big bet. 
um, you know, I think that uh, keep, keep in mind that there might be some rain here and these teams played or not these teams played, but th- we've had games in Ireland on this field before and the track has been an issue the, the playing surface. is always a little tricky when you have these football fields that aren't usually, uh, you know, designed for football or whatever. They, they don't play a ton over there. So Florida State team total over, maybe a Roydell Williams rushing total over. So I'll tread lightly, but I do think Florida State moves the ball. I do think Florida State wins. And I, I just think this is a type of game for a Georgia Tech's down 14, down 17 with the ball with a backdoor cover. And I don't necessarily love getting involved in games like that. I tend to agree with Will. And look, I don't like DJU. I think he's been average for what feels like eight years now in college. He's now in his third school, which is crazy to think. But they have so much talent at receiver and running back that he can sort of hide his setbacks or his insecurities with a power running game and play action. They're going to score. Georgia Tech's defense is really bad, guys. That's the problem. I like Brent Key. I think he's going to build something there uh, down in Georgia. But in terms of this year, the defense will hold them back. Florida State could score like 38 points in this game. But Georgia Tech is going to score, too, with Haynes King at quarterback, the former Texas A&M gunslinger. I think this game goes over. We bet some over 55. It's climbing up now, 56 and a half at a couple books. Um, I lean over, even at that number. It's either going to be in the 60s or in the 40s, and I'm inclined to think it's more the former. I'm waiting for some passing props to come up for for DJU to look at the under uh, on his number. Uh, but it's not up yet. That's kind of only, the only thought I have. I just I will say, guys, the returning production here favors Georgia Tech. And I'm not saying that they're better or the returning production is better. They just have a lot more returning players. Like, that's a storyline for Florida State. Florida State lost almost everyone off that roster last season. Can they all come together in week one um, against a team who has played together before and has started to get better under Brent Key? And look, he's an offensive line guy. I tend to try to back those type of coaches when I can. I, I'm not going to do it here, but I, I will say, though, the, the returning production for Florida State throughout the whole year, I will say, but in this specific game, it uh, concerns me because they just don't have a lot of it. Yeah, this is a game that, because of the ret- lack of returning production for FSU and uh, what do we really know about Georgia Tech? And like, look, the, the, I mentioned the line move earlier. I mean, that's a, going from wherever it was, 13 and a half, to where it is now. I mean, most of that money is is not just uh, common Joe walking off and off the street in in April betting twenty five bucks on this game or whenever the game was posted. It's probably uh, people who are familiar with the, with the returning production numbers and and they see uh, a potential edge and taking the dog. So yeah, I'm not going to hop in on this game uh, beforehand. I'm going to wait and see where this where this goes. One game that I do have, Sammy, and you mentioned it, and uh, now I'm in a I'm in a great spot because I, I laid a, a much shorter number with Montana State uh, against New Mexico uh, when when this number was first posted. So uh, this number has been driven up to like nine and eight and a half, nine now. Uh, the Bronco Mendenhall debut in New Mexico, who is right there among for for worst teams in the country, but. Bobcats, obviously, a, a contender to win uh, the FCS title this year. A very good program for a good team. But the fact that this number has grown so high, what were you leaning here between the uh, the Bobcats and Lobos? It's 11 and a half now, Barry. Is it a lot? Yeah, I, I missed that. that. That's ridiculous. That, there's that's... a rumor that one of these syndicates is going to release the favorite. Because, you know, you got to give out 11 and a half when you could have laid nine, nine and yeah. a half. That's, yeah. well, that's three, a true three, syndicate. Or four, but, but weeks ago. <laughs> I look, if it gets any higher, I made the game nine. So the fact that it's already crossed through 10, as we know, 10 isn't one of the most key numbers, but it's a it's a nice round number. I mean, we see games, you know, 31, 21, 24, 14. That's it's a common landing number, maybe not the most key number, but anything north of 10, I'm gonna play. Um, what I will do, this game will be on Saturday at four o'clock Eastern. I'm going to watch the screen religiously the next couple of days. And if I see that 11 and a half start to dip down to 11, I'll grab the highest number. But I've been told that somebody somewhere is going to give out Montana State. So I think if you like the dog, you could wait. Well, maybe get an even bigger number, maybe a 12 and a half, maybe even a 13 for a second. But as we know, and as we've talked about, these wise guys that laid Montana State they push it up, people chase it, and then there's going to be another group of wise guys that will come in and take 13 because these guys bet numbers, not teams. 
Yeah, it's uh, boy, that, that is a hell of a lot of points. Plus three fifty on the money line. Uh, if you're New Mexico, I mean, you, you don't have that many chances to win games this year. You're a total rebuild. I mean, don't you get motivated by the fact that you have a, a one double A team, an FCS coming to, to your building, an FCS team coming to your building, and not only favor, but now you're an eleven point favorite. And uh, I think these spreads are prevalent enough where these kids have to know they're not only underdogs but big underdogs. I'd only look towards the dog. Dampier, the quarterback's not a bad player. Played a little bit at the end of last year. Through six touchdowns, no interceptions. He can run a little bit. I, uh, I, I'm tempted here to take the points. I probably will end up. I, I'll give it out plus eleven. I'll take the points here. Ooh, plus eleven. I like. I need something to root for Saturday. So maybe it's that. I mean, look, the, the late game is very, very late. I didn't stand for that game. So maybe some plus eleven on New Mexico in the middle of the day. Will I kind of like it? Yeah, yeah. I, I was ready to 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 try and talk myself into betting. You mentioned the late, 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 late game. Uh, Delaware State, the worst team in the MEAC, getting 38 and a half against Hawaii, just because you figure Hawaii, McBride maybe won't play. Uh, reports are he's not able to play in games yet after his offseason uh, legal trouble. Do they show anything uh, with UCLA on tap next week and just thinking the spot might have been great to take a a, a really bad team from the MEAC. But uh, this this story about the travel woes from got from from Delaware to to Hawaii, I I guess we're busing to JFK from Dover, Delaware. Like I don't I I don't know how there aren't any more convenient flights from either Philly or DC or, or, or Newark, or one of our producers, Lisa, says she, she had to stop uh, either in Arizona from, from BWI, so maybe, maybe there aren't. Maybe a little local knowledge there, but I would think that, like, are they even going to be able to make it out there now? Because not only you have, what, 125, 150 people probably between team and coaches and support staff, you got all the equipment that you got to load onto planes, like, it's not like you pro- you have like multiple blocks of tickets sitting around on a plane to Hawaii on on like a day or two's notice. Like like it's like if they get out there, it's probably going to have to be like multiple planes and multiple trips for for people. It, like it, w- w- what a bizarre situation. But yeah, I can't I can't get involved in this now, Jeff. I think you have to look at either just taking Hawaii or fading Delaware State, like team total or something or something along those lines. Because you're you're exactly right. Think about what they're going to have to do. There's, you can't just call whatever airline, be like, do you have 100 tickets on one flight to Hawaii? They don't have it right now, right? Like for tomorrow, for the next day, they're going to have to find a way to get 12 players there, 12 players there, 18 players there. Like they're not going to go in one group unless they find some money to 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 charter a plane. So that, that takes away practice on today's Tuesday, Tuesday. Wednesday, like when are you going to practice? When are you going to prepare for this game? As you mentioned, they're already 38 point underdogs on the road. Um, I, this, this pairing, by the way, this game to me is one of the most random games I've ever seen. Like to fly <laughs> from Delaware all the way to Hawaii. How much is Hawaii paying them? I can't find it. It can't be that much. Yeah, no, it, I looked, it wasn't disclosed. I, I just saw a quote from somebody within the Delaware State Administration saying it was more than enough to, to cover travel expenses. I'm sure they, and that's the sad Before. thing. Whatever, whatever the surplus was from the, the, the travel budget to overage was probably going to fund quite a bit of their athletic department budget for the year. So hopefully they are able to get there. Hopefully they are able to, to, to play the game well, in the past, right? Didn't, didn't Robert Kraft like send his plane somewhere for certain teams or, or in, in the past to maybe get yeah. teams to, to get, yeah, let's get the pay. Air, Air Patriots, Air New England. Let's get a uh, let's get the uh, private ship uh, Bob Kraft in New England down to uh, to Dover to get the uh, get the old Hornets to Hawaii. Hawaii money line here. Is that what we're doing? Oh, I mean, sure. we absolutely minus a hundred thousand. Pat our record here. Start off one and zero. We hey, the Bear Bears podcast one and zero on the season. Hawaii money line. We'll All I know week. is this: I'm going to get at least four texts at about ten o'clock p.m. <laughs> Eastern. From my weekend warrior group thread, Hawaii in the over question mark. Like, they're all going to parlay it. Like th- this is the bookmaker dream. Yep. The Hawaii twelve o'clock midnight Eastern kick because you know the Hawaii money's coming in. You know the over money is coming in. Every sports book is going to be rooting against Hawaii and the over come like eleven o'clock, eleven thirty Eastern because the the drunker people get, the more they got to go to the island and parlay Hawaii in the over. <laughs> 
I know the bartender's not an NFL guy. Is this going to be the first bartender play of the year in Hawaii no. minus 38 after the, the airplane fiasco? No, I think he's I think he's waiting for uh, Bears on the road. Bears are on the road, I think, right? Week one against Tennessee. No, they're home. Host Tennessee. They're home. They're well, home. he'll be on the Bears because you got to lay four with a rookie <laughs> quarterback in his debut. Yep. <laughs> yep. Absolutely. I can't, I, can't, I can't wait. I cannot wait for the bartender to, to get back into our lives. He's a... A wonderful, wonderful human being to, uh, to to the gift that keeps on giving. But so week zero, not necessarily great. But week one, uh, next week, obviously there are some some bigger name games involving some some bigger name teams. Uh, Thursday night, North Carolina, Minnesota, Colorado, North Dakota State, and then obviously uh, over the weekend, Clemson, Georgia, Penn State, West Virginia. Uh, LSU, USC, Miami, Florida, uh, a, a lot there. Any early feels, any early leans, anything you may have fired on already, expecting a number uh, to move, Will? I can only imagine, you and I were talking about this the other day, I can only imagine the news cycle if Colorado and Dion are 0-1 <laughs> and that thing gets off to a bad start because I can promise you, if things get off to a bad start, 0-1, 1-2, it's going to be somebody's fault. It's not going to be Dion's fault. It's not going to be his case. It's going to be nobody with the last name Sanders' fault. So I, I just want to see that news cycle. That will be a uh, – I don't think it will happen, but, boy, that would be fascinating. You take the bison? Uh, uh, I'll pro- if it got to 10, I would. If it, I wouldn't lay it. I would take it before I would lay it against the bad defense. So, um yeah, I, I would take it before I lay it. I do like Florida. I, there's two and a half. I never, you never want to take two and a half this early because even if you like this, I'd hey, you might get a three. And if it goes down to two, so what? Difference between two and a half and two, nowhere near the difference between two and a half and three. But SEC team at home. Uh, look, I know Florida is not expected to have a good season, but a lot of that's because of the schedule. The team is good, and this is a tension convention because I know we're going to talk about first coach fired. The favorite, I mean, the easy answer for, hey, who's the first coach fired in college football? The easy answer, the cop-out is whoever loses this game immediately goes into the spotlight and uh, immediate into the uh, you know hotter seat because what Miami's paying for that roster, uh, Florida with all the rumors, the Lane Kiffin, all that stuff, they expect to do more. So this is fascinating to me, but I just like Florida getting two and a half. I, I don't trust Cristobal in a close game. I got an S- SEC team at home. I think Florida is a you know is a talented team despite their their over under for wins things like that. So uh, that this is the game I'm most excited to watch, and I, I do like Florida plus the points here. I, I might be I might be holding a Florida plus three ticket already. So uh, Bear, yeah. why do you I, do I, this, Bear? You do you, why do you you're just you're so curmudgeonly about your team, buddy. Why why wouldn't I do it? It's I'm on good... Oregon minus forty three against Idaho. Let's go. See, I'm I'm excited for my team this season, and you. Are, are fading your team already week one i'm excited for my team i i see i am i have like options here my man i played them to win the acc i played them under nine and a half and i took florida plus three like all three of those things could happen like they could lose to florida they, they, they could lose to usf they could lose somewhere else and they could still get to the acc championship game and and, and, and get there and win and make the playoff or they win by a point or exactly or they, and that's even better I think if they lose to Florida, what we think they could be is unlikely to happen. If they can't win this game with all this preparation, all this time, with a, a roster that's much improved, with a new quarterback, a new running back, the, the offensive defense line maturing a little bit more. I mean, they're they're better than Florida. I, I, I get it's a road game. I understand that. Um, but look, to be fair, these are the games that Mario's teams tend to play best in. It's like the game at Cal, week nine, that I'm worried about with Miami. Yeah, I have yeah. Miami to make the playoff plus 250. So I hope Miami just wins. You guys can have your plus three. That's fine. How about a 21 20 final? Uh, Works for they're me. They're going to cut to Mario on the sideline. There, there's going to be a minute left. The other team will have no timeouts and he'll be like, hmm, what should I do? <laughs> do I what should I off? do? <laughs> um, I think Miami has more talent than any team in the ACC, though, this year. So they might win. For other reasons, you know, I think he gets dragged, unfortunately, a lot when he's built a monster of a program at Miami after building a monster at Oregon. Obviously, we'd like him to be better in game. Uh, I did just bet this morning Notre Dame plus three against Texas A&M. There are some threes offshore. Yep, two threes right now offshore. Uh, The two and a halfs are getting expensive. Uh, DraftKings minus two and a half, minus 120. FanDuel minus two and a half, minus 123. So it's getting closer to that three, uh, but I took a three this morning. And uh, look, we talked about New Mexico already in week zero. 
They're going to play against Arizona in week one, which is technically week two, but we'll call it week one. Right. If New Mexico can hang around against Montana State, guys, that 30 is going to go down maybe through the 28. We got some plus 31 on New Mexico against Arizona in week one, I guess. I'm so confused. Is it week one or is it week two? It's the game on the 31st. That's all I know, Jeff. Um, But I I still think you can take 30 um, because I'm inclined to think New Mexico plays well this weekend, which will in turn drop the number in the following week. So, uh, you know, the 31s are gone. It's mostly 30 now against Arizona. But again, if New Mexico plays well, that number 30 is going to evaporate and you're going to see 28, 27 and a half, 27 as we get into the second game. And, and, and I, I think it's it, talking about Arizona. We mentioned about how uh, we're not sure about McMillan's status. He's out there in like a non-contact Jersey. So, so, so maybe buying high and if his injury doubt, or if he's going to play, how much will he play? That might drive that number down. A little bit more, Jeff. Jeff, you liked Fresno a couple of weeks ago. Did you getting in twenty one? Yeah, I, I, I did. Then Jeff Tedford is not coaching anymore, so I, I think it's hard to wager on a team uh, without a coach uh, that we know heading to week one. I'm just fading Michigan with all the changes they have, right? I mean, it's the same with the idea with Florida State. It's that simple, right? Like you have a situation where you lose, they lose forty two hundred snaps in the offensive line. Like that's not that's not nothing, right? They have a quarterback that. We don't know if he can throw the ball down the field with any consistency. They they do return some guys on defense, sure, but it just feels like a lot of new. But it's hard to bet on Fresno now with their coach gone. Like Jeff Tedford, I trust Jeff Tedford. I think he'll have the team in the right situation. He's not there anymore. So, um, you know, I got a good number ba- back in in May, but I, I don't love it much anymore. Uh, I got Colorado minus seven in May. I don't. I don't. That's now nine. I wouldn't bet Colorado minus nine. I think they're better than 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 North Dakota State. Um, and I go back to the idea of like who's stopping Travis Hunter. North Dakota State. Everyone says they can just run the ball in Colorado. They certainly can. They're not as good as they've been in the past. Colorado is better. So I took the seven there. I still like LSU minus six against USC, mostly because I think the trench matchup there favors LSU a lot, guys. Their offensive line is really, really good. And I know USC has new coaches on defense. They they, they do, but they don't have that pro talent that you need still. Like, they're still behind when it comes to the, the talent development. And I keep seeing that they're bigger now. They're bigger. Oh, congratulations. You look like a college offense or college defensive line should look, but – I just don't buy them in, in this contest where LSU just has better players uh, and really better trenches. Yeah, you guys you guys got all these good numbers, man. We text each other 500 times a day. I don't remember getting Colorado minus seven, these plus threes, all these numbers. I don't, I, I, I like a I just took Notre Dame plus three because Sammy said so. I did his favorite thing in the world. I just take – I wagered on something in the middle of the show. Uh, yeah. Sammy hit on something. If you like New Mexico this week, then you like them next week. Could you parlay New Mexico this week with with next week? Because that's about as correlated as it gets. If the thir- <laughs> if they cover the eleven, they're more likely to cover the thirty, and you get a bigger number. So I don't know that books will let you do that, but that's at least uh, a, a thought process. And Bear, I know you like, and I think we're on the same page here. Uh, the under, which is not going to be a fun one, but USC LSU. Oh. I think LSU can't be worse off uh, on defense than they were last year. They can only be better. Uh, I think they're obviously going to take two steps back offensively going from uh, Jaden Daniels to Nussmeyer, losing t- two top 20-ish wide receivers. I know the offensive line's still good, but USC is going to be better defensively. Uh, I think USC is going to be more just well-balanced in terms of like, you know, better running backs, better wide receivers. I didn't think they were very talented last year. And I just think both defenses are improved. So that 64 is based a lot off last year. And uh, I'm sure that's the, the kind of your thinking here where uh, 64 is just too high. Yeah, I, I may I did grab under sixty four again. Uh, will it go higher? Maybe it does go to sixty four and a half. Maybe it goes to sixty five. But but I, I kind of reached this point. Okay, sixty four is a uh, is a buy for me. And you hit on it. Two new defensive coordinators who have heard all off season how much uh, they're 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 new they're new teams now. The stunk defensively last year. Uh, I think they'll obviously make some schematic changes. Whether the personnel uh, can adapt to it or not. But but this number I, I think is way too high. I did grab under 64 in uh, LSU USC in the uh, in that big Sunday night uh, primetime game in Vegas. But well, you mentioned the, the market about like uh, offshore. Uh, who knows how much uh, these these global books are, are taking on those markets about like uh, the first coach hot f- first coach fired and uh, you mentioned 
uh, Napier, you mentioned Cristobal, uh, or maybe it was Sammy. Who, it, was, it was either you or Sammy. I can't remember who it was now. You, you were both taking the taking your shots at my head coach in Coral Gables, which is uh, isn't cool at all. But uh, if if you guys, if you needed to to bet something off of this list, did you, you, is there anything that, that kind of looks like it might be playable? I like Dave Aranda. I think they were so bad defensively last year, 6.6 .6 yards per play allowed on defense, and now he's going to be calling the defense. So, hey, he's going to have his fingerprints. If they don't improve, you can point at him. And the schedule's tough. You have a stretch here. We're at Utah. Air Force, remember, Air Force beat him in a bowl game was it two years ago, and Air Force beat him comfortably. Uh, then you play at Colorado and at Iowa State a couple weeks after that. If things get off to a bad start, it doesn't sound like he's on the best footing there. Sounds like he almost got fired last year. Remember, they canceled. I think they canceled the spring game which annoyed some people last minute so uh aranda's one off the radar that i think uh, I, I think has a shot to get home i would hate to see a fellow sammy p out of work boys <laughs> but we Sam don't want Pittman to see any year, sammy p's out of work this schedule is not great for arkansas now they're probably going to beat arkansas pine bluff if they don't win that game he's gone but let's give them pine bluff then they go at Oklahoma State. They come in and play a UAB team that could beat them. I mean, that's going to be about 10, 10 and a half maybe at Auburn. Then you're at home for A&M and Tennessee back to back. One in five is completely possible. Then they hit the bye week. Then it's LSU. So if the Hogs are one in five going into the bye with LSU on deck, they will launch Sam Pittman. He's not I, making it out of this out of this calendar year. I think we all agree with that. But remember, this is the first coach fired. So, you know, if they somebody gets fired week two, uh, you know, that's going to be the guy. So you, you want to look for a team that has all the makings of just falling flat early. And to me, that's Arkansas. It is also funny too, Jeff, that I think number one and number three on the board are meeting uh, week one, Miami and Florida. Those coaches are both right near the top. The loser, the losers out of that. I think Florida. Look, we talked about their schedule. It's much tougher the back half of the season than the front half. So maybe Napier survives. The thing about the Pittman that the question that that I have, and I, I think Bear can answer this one, is like, are they going to fire him or just sort of let him ride it out because they like him? Like they like Sam Pittman there. Um, it, are they going to go ahead and fire him? First, are they going to be the first one to rush out and fire their coach? Or if things are bad, they just mutually agree that they're this is done after this season and there's not a big announcement of a firing? Yeah, it, it could be that because he, I think he is well-liked there. But again, uh, they also have Bobby Petrino now on the offensive staff. And from what – I mean, who, who knows if there'll be a push to bring him back because they were, they were in the sugar bowl with Bobby Petrino as head coach. Uh, and obviously we all know how his tenure, tenure in – uh, Fayetteville ended. So we, we'll see. I, w I would hope he just kind of gets the whole uh, uh, effective end of the season, not, not back. But what good does that do anybody really? And, and, I mean, unless you know that you're just going to elevate Petrino to, to be head coach. If but, they uh, lose 52 to seven to Tennessee, his yeah, ass is gone. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I would agree. But, but you know, it's funny. You mentioned one in five going to the bye week. Cause I wrote down, like uh, if they lose, if they lose to Delphi and UAB, they will be one in six headed to Mississippi state on October 26th. And, and then that would do it. But one in five going to the bye week also uh, feels like a very likely, like, like a, it could be that spot if it, it does get bad in, uh, in, in Arkansas. So, 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 so Jeff, you, uh, you were kind yesterday and, and sent us some, uh, some player props for some selected players that, that are up. Uh, I believe it was at a uh, bet MGM who knows how much yeah. able to, to bet those for um, it, it bet MGM, the King of sports books, but, but they are up for however much you're able to bet. Uh, I, I'm sure you're all over the Oregon overs, right? I can confirm they're not letting you bet that much on these uh, on these wagers. I'm I'm waiting for them to hopefully. Uh, I've sent an email out. Hey, can you give me a, a little bit more here? Um, Evan Stewart, uh, Oregon's wide receiver, the transfer from AM. His number is eight fifty point five for receiving yards, and both their wide receivers last season had over eleven hundred yards receiving. Tez Johnson and Troy Franklin. Troy Franklin's number, by the way, was just for the regular season, including the watching game, obviously, the Pac-12 championship game. He didn't play in the bowl game. Tez numbers bumped up a little bit by, by the great bowl game he had, but Evan Stewart's going to have a 1,000 yards in this offense. It just That's what this offense is. They, they churn out a, a bunch of yards, both for running backs, wide receivers, and quarterbacks. So that number feels light to me. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to hit it 
when hopefully I, my limits get released a little bit here. Uh, I'm not I'm not a heavy hitter, guys, but they're uh, they're kind of squeezing me with the numbers. So I'm gonna get it soon. Hopefully, <laughs> next couple of days. Um, but I'm I'm itching to take that one. But by the way, did you see that we? Uh, I, I don't know. If, I don't want to take credit for it, but our I don't know if it was our podcast or whatever. But did you see that the Ryan Day Coach of the Year uh, Brian Award winner moved from twelve to one to eight to one. Oh, it has to be that. us! Wow. Yeah. Uh, I feel I feel I feel good. I'll, I'll, you know, we're going to take credit for it, even if it wasn't us. But uh, we, I'm, I'm I'm happy we were able to hopefully get some people on that to get a uh, to get a good number. I actually bet an Oregon under here, Jeff. I, I bet I bet Gabriel under 33 50 and a half uh, passing yards. I think you obviously got a team that's going to run a lot. You got a team that's going to be in a lot of blowouts. It probably means uh, some Dante Moore playing time. You got a guy who is, is kind of, I want to say frail, but he's had some injury issues in the past. And you're going to want to keep him uh, healthy, certainly as you get into the later uh, Big Ten portion of the schedule. So, uh, Sammy, Will, I don't know if you guys. To, uh, we're able to look at these, but uh, yeah, I, I took Dylan Gabriel under uh, 3,350 and a half passing yards. That's a big number, man. And the thing about Dylan Gabriel is if he misses one game, he's not going to hit that. And this is a guy who's had concussion issues in the past. Uh, remember the game last year when we found out that Gabriel wasn't going to play and then they brought him out and he was taking snaps with the ones and everybody's freaking out, texting me, you don't know anything about Oklahoma. <laughs> and then they brought him back out with the little cute shorts on and he wasn't playing. Uh, that's a nightmare that I'd uh, like to erase from my brain, sweating quarterback injuries with uh, concussions. But uh, I'm going to another quarterback, Riley Leonard. His number is 2,600 and you get the hook as books often do. When he was healthy at Duke, he was spinning it. You know, when he was a sophomore, uh, 2,900 yards, almost three grand through the air last year, obviously, he, he rolled his ankle, then he broke his toe. It was a weird year for him. But by all accounts, Notre Dame uh, going to throw the ball more this year because they have Riley Leonard. They threw it a lot last year with Hartman. But I think the, the running game sets up the pass at Notre Dame. And he's got, you know, at least one NFL receiver. I think the tight end is going to go to the NFL. Notre Dame always has that big tight end that can get open and snag balls. So Riley Leonard in a bounce back by low spot. I mean, if you're making a number on Leonard last year, it's probably 2,900. Uh, but because of the injury and because we all know he only played seven games last year, the number is 300 yards lower. So at 2,600 at BetMGM, I think Riley Leonard over that number is very, very possible. Barry, you and I are both in Connecticut, and we have a hard time sometimes finding these things at the DraftKings, the Fandals of the world. Uh, so, But look, just directionally, Shadur Sanders under is one I like just because playing behind a, behind a bad offensive line, got beat up last year, got hit a lot. Uh, and if things aren't going well for them, like I mentioned, their schedule is tough. They're one of my favorite uh, under win bets for the year in terms of the season win totals. Does he, getting ready for the draft, hoping to be you know top pick, top three pick, does he sit out the last game, the last two games? So I think there's just a lot of ways to winning under with Shadur Sanders. And even, oh. I, maybe he might not even need to say I'm sitting out. That Maybe that's a situation where uh, if Colorado isn't bowl eligible, maybe his father has the conversation yes. with him and says, I'm not going to play you. Uh, you could be the number one or number two or number three pick in the draft. Uh, we don't want to risk you getting hurt. This is about your future. So that's an interesting point and certainly something to uh, – to monitor as the year goes on. That, that's all, all these all these little things that that add, that add up to uh, hopefully finding an edge in these player. How, how about one more quick one? Are we of the belief? Like I'm not a big Quentin Ewers guy. Texas Washington, the uh, the playoff game was on the other day, and it's just trying to think. Man, Texas came so close to yep. stealing that game. It's amazing they didn't. They got that close. They just ran some weird plays. Do we see Arch Manning at some point? Do you play Ewers under with the that thought that hey, if it doesn't go well early, we see Arch Manning or, or not? Mop not so much. Time, I think. Okay. I don't think Arch starts a game. I don't, I don't think he does either. Will I appreciate you mentioned Colorado by the way? So now we can get this yes. this podcast like just sent to the moon by aggregation people that love Colorado. I got in trouble because I said they're going to be six and six. You just wow. said they're going to be under and you don't like Shadur Sanders. So trifecta wow. hit. Perfect. Another, another thread to mute on Twitter. I can't wait to, <laughs> to see the, to see the one response and then have uh, notifications go to like 20 plus. I'll see what it is and, 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 and bid adieu. 
Thanks, guys. Talk well, wait till the 2025 Bear Bets summer kickoff episode when Dion is coaching the Cowboys and Shadur <laughs> is the starting quarterback. Did you? Um, no, stop. Just stop. Just stop. Bye, Sam. <laughs> I'm trying to get, like, you know, aggregated here. You know, no, of course. De- I heard, oh, hold on, Dion to the Cowboys? Let's just tweet that out right now. It'll definitely happen, right? <laughs> Is there is there like a bet online number for Dion where he coached next year? Is, would you oh, would you put sure, money on the I'm Cowboys? Sure there will be. I, they'll post anything and let someone bet five bucks on. It. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Are, are, are we are we done now? Are we done aggregating? Are we yeah, good? I think so we okay. we didn't like week one uh, week zero slate. We gave like seven wagers today, so I feel like we like it more than oh, we. Oh no, we get, we get, we talk more week one than we did week zero. That's for sure. We I will talked say a lot more quickly, New Mexico than I thought we were going to talk. I'll end, <laughs> I'll end on relation, some relationship advice. If you tell your wife or your girlfriend, hey, I can't do date night on Saturday because I got to watch the week zero games, you better hope like hell she knows nothing about these teams. <laughs> uh, well, by well, the way, that's like, that's like uh, Dins- Drew Dinsick, Will Capper, who, t- who they, like, like coincidentally, in, in, in air quotes, just happens to take a vacation the, the last week of August before NFL season starts when it's the uh, the week where there's no preseason football, NFL yes. rather, the, 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 the week zero with college games that aren't any good before NFL. So that, that is a uh, that is an all-time boss move right there by uh, by Will Capper. So on that note, enjoy uh, enjoy the, the the limited offering we have this week in, uh, in college football. We'll be back more uh, next week with the, uh, a whole lot deeper slate. We're back from the New Mexico Lobo Hour Bear uh, to talk about the, our, <laughs> the our land best of bets. I, I did not expect there to be a, a Lobo Hour on the show, but uh, here we are with uh, the limited Week One slate. Uh, how, how, about a, uh, how about a how um, about a a Bear Bet remote? We can do a live podcast from the uh, New Mexico New Mexico State game this year. I, I'm in. Um, I have a live update for you uh, during the show. It has been announced that Delaware State has found. They have found travel accommodations and will be in Hawaii shortly. Well, Beautiful. shortly, 11 more hours to go, yeah. but still shortly compared to what they they were previously. So uh, if you want to grab the, uh, what, what's their mascot? The Hornets, I believe. The Hornets, Hornets plus the 38. Uh, be my guest. I'm, I'm not touching I'm that gonna game. Wait. I'm going to um, wait. I think it's going to go up. I think it'll go, go up. up. You're going to wait. All I'm right. I'm going to wait. You're going to wait. Let's get to something we're not waiting on. It's your best bet. For college football, we both have win totals. Uh, where are you going? Yeah, I went Temple under two and a half as my best bet. Like they're, they're, they're a bottom five team this year. You, you, you lose Warner, your quarterback to Rice, and you had trouble scoring with him at times uh, last year. Like, I don't know how they're winning three games. I mean, I don't think you're winning a road game. Like, I don't even think UConn is that bad where Temple's going to go to UConn and win. And who are you beating at home? At Utah State? Army, like you probably have to win all three of those games to go over two and a half. I don't see that at all. So uh, under two and a half for Temple. Yeah, three and nine the last two years, one and seven in conference. Um, it's a tough job, Temple. I mean, you're, you're like 12th in your own city, right, for for sports teams. Um, that that feels like, a, like a, a tough place to be. I'm going to go to um, a win total bear, uh, Arizona State under four and a half wins. I like their coaching staff. I love the philosophy of what Ke- of what Kenny Dillingham is bringing. But Bear, their roster right now is another upheaval, right? They they just had a bunch of players leave, more come in. And I don't know where that roster stands right now as far as playmakers. But more than anything else, their schedule in the Big 12 is absolutely brutal in their first year. They face the top six teams in this conference. Kansas, Utah, Oklahoma State, UCF, Kansas State, and Arizona. Their quote-unquote easier games are at Texas Tech, a a very hard place to play. At Cincinnati, the the, the Bearcats might not be good, but again, you're on the road, and they host BYU. Their non-conference is not gimmies. They're they're, they're a six-point favorite home against Wyoming. Wyoming loses a lot and as a new coach. Mississippi State, they lost two, I believe, um, who was Arizona last year, lost them. And they're at Texas State, which which isn't a gimme. Like, I bear... Under four and a half to me, I, I would take an alternate under three and a half. I think Arizona State is looking at three-win season. Yeah, and I know someone I, I've heard out there from a couple people who really like uh, Arizona State's conference win total uh, under because, as you said, the way the way that schedule uh, shakes down in their first year in the Big Twelve, it does not uh, do the Sun Devils any favors whatsoever. So, 
can't wait for uh <clears throat> for next week when we have a even more discussion about week one we get to kind of overreact to maybe what we may or may not have seen in that Georgia Tech Florida State game if the Knolls get upset or if they look great uh, we overreact to, to talking season so uh, looking forward to see what happens uh, this coming weekend looking even more towards uh, next weekend when we get back on the road with Big Noon kickoff uh, Penn State West Virginia and um, we get to preview a full slate of games but again appreciate everybody for, uh, for watching and listening and uh, downloading wherever you consume your podcasts uh, remember to uh, rate, review, and subscribe. I appreciate all the interactions with people on Twitter, even though I mentioned how I muted a Colorado thread, but it wasn't people asking me and Jeff questions anymore. It turned into people going back and forth with each other. So I was like, you know what? It's time to tune out. But uh, appreciate everybody out there for, uh, for listening and watching again this week. For Jeff, for Sammy, for Will, I'm Bear. The less you bet, the more you lose when you win.